conduct of their wives, their actions, their attitudes. Hello? Ladies, you can minister to your husband without preaching to him and beating him over the head with the Bible. You can do it through love. Well, sweetheart, I love you. I just thank God he gave you to me. How many of you are trying to nag a man to go to church is not going to work probably 90% of the time because a man says, bless God, I'm in control here. I'll do what I want to. I'll make my own decisions. And nagging him, he's like, well, I'm just not going to go because she wants me to. Now, that's despite, and that's terrible, but how many know a lot of men are that way because they want to be in charge, even though they're really not. You women know that. But anyway, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Look at this. When they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear, now that's talking about reverence there. It isn't talking about fear. Do not let your adornment be merely outward. We're fixing to get some good stuff. You ready for this? Do not let your adornment be merely outward. Arranging the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. How many of you know there's nothing wrong with nice clothes, nothing wrong with gold, there's nothing wrong with nice things? So what is he saying here? Don't let it be the thing you're concentrating on. What he's really saying, too, is don't try to impress people just because of the way you dress and the things that you have. Amen. I'll be honest with you. I've been around many, many people that are very wealthy, and most of them that are very wealthy... You'd never know it. They don't flaunt it. They don't show it. Most of them are not wearing Rolexes and stuff, to be honest with you. They don't show it. They don't try to portray it. They're comfortable in who they are and what they have. They're not trying to be somebody. Truly, money will only show who you are. Money really only shows what kind of person you are. A good person do good things with money. A bad person do bad things with money. You know, if you're trying to impress somebody with your gold or with your automobile or with whatever, then you already got a problem. Right. Amen? Amen. Said, so, but look at verse four. Rather let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible, I love this, incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. What is the Lord like? It says, which is very precious in the sight of God. What's precious in the sight of God? Oh, a gentle and quiet spirit. Not a haughty, haughty, prideful, gentle, quiet spirit. You know, I tell you, I, I had the privilege and honor to meet Brother Kenneth Hagin a couple of times in my life. Actually, you guys, if you ever read any of his books, I'm sure some of you have, he talks sometimes about a, real, uh, a little red-headed lady that's a real prayer warrior. That was my wife's grandmother. He used to pastor my wife's grandmother in the 40s and a real good friend of ours that went on to be with the Lord right after a week after Brother Hagin did. But uh, I met him a few times, and, and it was really awesome to... You talk about an humble person. Quiet man. Would only speak, really, if you asked him questions and said something to him. He really didn't say a lot. He was very... What's the word I'm looking for? Very sensitive to the Spirit. Somebody else talking, somebody else saying something. Even if he had a, a word that needed to be spoken, he would back off and be quiet and let somebody else speak. Why? Because he wasn't haughty. He wasn't trying to project himself to be something. He knew who he was. He knew he was a preacher. He knew he was a teacher. He knew he was a prophet. He wasn't trying to force himself on someone or force himself. In. See, don't ever try to force yourself in a position, even in your family. Gentlemen, if you try to make your wife submit to you and try to, it's not going to work. You're going to have to love her. Love her as Christ loves the church. She'll submit to you. That's the whole key to this thing. You know, I know it talks a lot about wives submitting, and we need to talk a lot more about husbands loving. Amen. I mean, I'm being real with you. Husbands need to love. Wives will submit. That's the way it works. That's it. And again, you know, everybody has different concepts of love, but the bottom line is love is telling somebody, first of all. You've got to communicate that. I love you. Look at this. We're getting to a good point here. I hope you're with me. Verse 5. For in this manner, in former times, the holy women who trusted in God also adorned themselves, being submissive to their own husbands. 
as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters you are if you do good and are not afraid with any terror. Husbands, likewise, dwell with them, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife. Everybody say, honor your wife. And it says, as to the weaker vessel. It didn't say that the wife is a weaker vessel. It didn't say that at all. It says, as to the weaker vessel. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be... Husbands, if you don't honor your wife, it can literally hinder your prayers. Honor your wife. Cherish your wife. Tell your wife how much you love her. Tell her, tell her how much you, have to, you need her in your life. Tell her how much she means to you. Those things are vital. They want to hear it. Do you women want to hear that? Yes. No, really, be honest with you. Do you women want to hear that? Yes. Now, how I many you know men, it's not such a big deal to them? I mean, sure, they want to hear that you, you, know, you respect them and stuff like that. But how I many you know women want to be honored? Let's look at this. Finally, all of you be of one mind. Hello? What does the scripture say in James, the first chapter, about a double-minded man? It says he's unstable in all of his ways. So let not that man think he'll receive anything from the Lord because he's double-minded. How many of you got to have the same mind with your mate? How many know, again, it goes back to if you and your mate can get an agreement on what you're believing God for and pray and stand on the word and use that word, speak that word together, it'll come to pass in your life. It's that simple. So that's just too easy. No, it, that's the way it works. You believe, you agree, you pray, you have. Amen. Okay, here's a big question. How many of you as families pray together? See, that's one of the biggest, biggest things right there. That's one of the hardest things for men to do. I don't know why that is. But it's one of the hardest things for men to do is to pray with their wife and with their kids. I think sometimes we men have wanted to portray this macho image that we're all this and we're all that. And listen, guys, we're not that macho. We need our wives. We need our families. We need prayer. We need to be able to agree together. We need to be able to believe God together because that's going to get us the results of the things we desire and we want. Now, how many of you know there's more to it than, saying, than just saying, I agree? How many know you have to agree in the spirit? You have to come to agreement where you sit down and say, okay, sweetheart, what are we believing for this month? This is what we're believing for. Let's write this down. Okay, what scripture, sweetheart, are we standing on? You know, what, what scriptures are we saying? Because see, the scriptures, the word of God, the anointings on the word, as you speak that word and believe that word, that's going to bring the anointing on the scene to bring to manifest whatever you believe in God for. So you've got to say, what scriptures are we standing on, baby? What are we, what are, okay, we're agreeing here, yes, but okay, what are we going to stand on to see this manifest in our life? Habakkuk is a great, Habakkuk, the second chapter, verses 1 through 4, talk about write the vision, make it plain. I mean, it's important to write those things down and get an agreement. And what if it don't happen the first month? Do you give up and quit? No, you say, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I know it's this month it's coming. We receive it. Hallelujah. Debt cancellation. We're free from this in Jesus' name. You want debt cancellation? you got to go to the Word and find some other places where there's debt cancellation. Amen. Say, God, you're no respecter of persons. You did this for them, you do it for me. Amen. Amen. Healing. Healing is the easiest thing. For, to receive healing, it's the easiest thing there is. But so what do you mean? Jesus, remember what was it in uh, Matthew the 8th chapter, the leper came to him and said, Lord, if you be willing, you can heal me. She so said, I will. Stretch out his hand and touch him. Well, he did it for that man. He's got to do it for everybody. Because he's no respecter of persons. He is respecter of faith. Yes, he, is. he is respecter of faith. Yes. But he's no respecter of persons. So healing's for everybody. Prosperity's for everybody. Blessings for everybody. Do you know that we all can have, we should be having heaven on earth right now. That's what God designed marriage to be, heaven on earth. How many of your marriage, you feel like it's heaven on earth right now? Few of you. Praise the Lord. 
Now, I'm not going to ask you if you feel like it's the other way, but uh, <laughs> let's just say this. If you feel like it's not heaven on earth, then you've probably done some things, both of you, to get you in the situation you're in. But that can be turned around. Amen. It's called repentance. It's called, forgive me, I shouldn't have done that. I made a mistake. Amen? Amen. Let's close with this. Verse 8. Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion one for another. Love as brothers. Be tender-hearted. Everybody say tender-hearted. Tender be courteous. Not rendering evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing. Everybody say blessing. blessing. Knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit what? Blessing. How many want to inherit a blessing? Yes. If you're going to inherit a blessing, you've got to be a blessing. And it starts in your household. It starts with your mate. It starts with your children. It starts with your family. So you don't know my family. Well, I'm going to tell you what. You may have a rough situation in your family, but I doubt it was any worse than the situation I grew up in. And after I got born again, my, my parents got born again. Thank God. We can be an example. And as believers, we need to be example. Again, what is, it, what, are, what is a marriage? What is it portraying? Christ loving the church. What you're saying as a husband, you don't know how Christ loves the church? Watch how I love my wife. Watch how I love my family. I'm going to show you how Christ loves the church. And that's supposed to make people want, the outside people to want to participate and be a part of the church because of the way we love our wives, the way we love our families. How many of you know... Most ladies want affection. Yes. Amen. Now, I'm a very affectionate person. You can ask my wife. Wow. I mean, I'm always hugging her, kissing her, holding her hand. Why? Because I want to bring security to her. I want her to understand I love you. There's nobody else. I love you. Amen. Now, how many you know a lot of women aren't secure? I, I've been in malls. We go to different places and shop with my kids. Uh, I love to take my girls shopping. They wear me out, but I love to take them shopping. Because they go in there and they search everything, find everything, you know, and I get to sit around. I always tell them in those shops I go in, I said, why don't y'all have a place for the men to sit up here in the front somewhere? You know, just give us a place to sit down, a television to watch or something, you know. We just watch a football game while they're, while they're doing their thing, you know. They get their shopping over with, you know. Oh, Dad, what do you think about it? Oh, I love it. It's beautiful. You know, I tell them all the time, girl, you're beautiful. Man, you're beautiful. Why? I want them to have and understand what a godly man is like. I don't want them getting some bum out there that don't even have a job that, you know, drives up and honks the horn for them to come out and get, that ain't ever happening. I got news for you. I want him to open the door for my, for my girls. I want them to understand how a godly man operates and how he acts. Amen? I don't want my kids hooked up with some flake. God knows there's plenty of them out there. And there's plenty of them that know how to play church. Yes, there is. Well, you think about it. it gentlemen, if you were going to look for a wife, are you going to go to a bar to find her? No. See, men can be wild and crazy, but when they get ready to find a, a lady that they want to really marry or something, they're going to come to the church. Well, those are the kind of people you've got to be ready for. You've got to make sure they've got a relationship with Jesus, and they're not coming here just looking for something. Amen. Other than the Lord. In a relationship with him. Am I being honest with you? I know I'm talking some stuff to you here, but I'm being honest. I'm just trying to, to lay a foundation here where you can see some things. Guys, the thing is, we've come to a place right now. We're living in the end times. We're living in the last of the last days. You make a choice from this day forward. Where are you going with your family? You think there's been pressure? There's going to be more pressure. But it isn't nothing you can't handle. You walk in the faith, you walk in peace, you walk in love. Yes. And your relationship with your mate can grow stronger than it ever has. Yes. And then what's going to happen when people, their 